um, so we'll start recording. And then I'm going to take us over to Facebook. <clears throat> so one of these days I will remember how to do this smoothly but today is not that day well no that's why I was like oh is it zoom is it facebook and sorry I didn't see the link but no, I'm learning. Like, I didn't know you could stream a Zoom to a Facebook Live. Like, it's fancy. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> um, it's a little clunky at the beginning and the end um, because you can't exactly see. Like, I think we're probably up right now. Um, okay. But I can't see it. But uh, uh, so. yeah. Technology, yeah. it can be like your best friend and your worst enemy, right? <clears throat> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially right now. Yeah. All right. All right, so we think we're okay. So now I think we're going live. And I Oh, it does say in the upper right hand corner. Oh yeah. Live on Facebook. Yeah. And it says recording, so I think we're recording. Cool. That's awesome. Um, well, I can't see us live yet, but I think we are live because in the past, I've just looked awkwardly at the computer right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of amazing. Um, all right, so here we go. So there we are. There we are. Yay, we're doing it. All right, we are doing it. <laughs> so exciting. All right, well, let's, um, let's start off with yes, having you awkwardly at in, the whoops, computer right now. Yeah. now i've got feedback streaming in there see you would think i know how to do this by now um let's start off now that we've gotten through those little hiccups uh with you introducing yourself so uh take it away tell us a little bit about yourself sure well um first of all thanks for inviting me to have this conversation um as we were kind of chit-chatting before we went live i'll just kind of repeat that Self-care is something I'm super passionate about and I love talking about and not all the time that um, anyone wants to listen. So this is a great opportunity. Um, but my name is Lauren Moss um, and I'm a member at Koinos Community Church and that's how Tim and I know each other. Um, and I'm also a licensed professional counselor. Um, which just means that through the state of Pennsylvania, I can see counseling clients privately. And then I teach uh, full time as a professor at Kutztown University. Um, and then I have a background in K-12, so school counseling and special education. Um, but through my, my kind of growth and my process with all of those different um, branches on my career tree, if you want to call it that, I've kind of come to um, appreciate this concept of, of self-care. So uh, it's definitely played an important part in my life as we've navigated these uncertain times. Um, so hopefully something that I share tonight will resonate with somebody who either is live or ends up, you know, finding the recording um, in some other way later. Well, that's awesome. And thank you so much for being with us, Lauren. I'm really glad to have you here and I'm excited for this conversation. Um, and just so people know, uh, as we get started, we're going to start off with me asking Lauren a, a couple of questions. And after we go back and forth for a few minutes, we're just going to open it up. So I know we have a few folks who are viewing us live. We'll probably have some other folks who hop on eventually. And we just want to invite you that if you have questions, uh, to throw them up here on Facebook, and we will do our best to engage with those. And we're going to keep this to about 30 minutes. So we're going to try and wrap this up by 930 one way or another. So, um, so you already mentioned that, you know, the idea of self-care is really important to you. Uh, obviously, that's why you're here talking about it. So maybe let's just start there. Why? Why does, why does self-care matter so much to you? And why do you think it's important for others? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess it's just been so important in my own, like I said, growth and development. Initially, it started out as a professional thing. Um, as a counselor, self-care is sort of a construct we talk about, you know, when we're talking about things like 
as I'm sure you're familiar, you know, with your training, Tim, um, when you're in the helping professions and you're helping others, you can have like empathy fatigue and burnout. Um, and so they teach us about self care and how it's important to understand that you can't uh, pour from an empty cup and things like that, you know, that we really need to take care of ourselves so that we're able to give to others. And, um, it almost feels ridiculous to say, but I often um, say that I needed to get a PhD to understand that I needed to take care of myself. Um, you know, it wasn't until my doctoral program in counseling that I actually learned this term. Um, and I feel like in the last few years, you know, since that experience, it's almost like a buzzword now on social media and just in lay circles, which I think is amazing. Um, and I wish it was that way had been that way when I was growing up. Um, I recently had a friend tell me, obviously before uh, shelter in place and all of that was happening, that her niece was having an eighth uh, birthday party with a self-care theme. I'm like, what? How do eight-year-olds know what self-care is? You know, but you know, I'm used to like unicorns or Disney princess, and this this girl wanted to do uh, self-care. So it really struck me that this has become part of you know, just the vocabulary um, and lifestyle in, in a lot of people, you know, not just those who are in the helping professions, which I think is amazing. But I still can't help but uh, imagine that there are other people out there, you know, still who, even if you know what it is, are like me, where you're finding yourself in a place like I was in graduate school, feeling like, okay, now this, this term has been introduced to me, and I'm starting to understand that um, you know, I need to take care of myself in order to help others, but how do I do that? And, um, you know, particularly, I think right now, as we're all um, finding ourselves in this context of um, exacerbated stress and, you know, sometimes overwhelm, um, that while it might be more important now than ever to be implementing self care practices, it can feel more challenging than ever as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so could you unpack that a little bit? Like, what do you, what do you see as some of the, the biggest challenges, particularly right now? Maybe they're unique to this situation, maybe they're not. But what do you see as some of the, the biggest yeah. challenges we face right now when it comes to taking care of ourselves? Yeah, um, I mean, I think any time that we're in a, a situation where there's stress and overwhelm happening, it tends to not bring out the best in us, right? Like if there are already, for example, patterns in your marriage or in your relationship with your children or your sibling or your coworkers, and now we have extra stress of for example, not having someone available for childcare, or you know, maybe finances are a stress. Um, these uncertainties that that everybody's been navigating in their own way, you know, it only highlights some of those patterns that were maybe kind of there before, um, but now we're seeing them, you know, loud and clear because we're spending 24 hours a day with the same people in a cramped space, perhaps. Um, or, you know, we have these other stresses that maybe it was easy to ignore, you know, under different circumstances. Um, I'm, I'm here to talk about this, but certainly no exception. You know, I'm sure my husband would tell me, tell you, uh, well, why am I snapping at him for not unloading the dishwasher, taking the trash out, you know, and, and it's just because you start to get a little bit rammy, you know, under these circumstances. So I think that that's why it's it's both i would say a challenge and also a potential blessing of this time to be able to look at um what some of those patterns are a little closer and while we may not have chosen that for this time and space in our life it's it's there and it's ever present you know because of these circumstances and so uh i guess the only way to get to um you know a positive kind of outcome is is through it and so you can choose to kind of keep butting up against uh the same let's say relational patterns or challenges you're having or to kind of step back and say what is this teaching me and how can i take care of myself and be gentle with myself um through this mm -hmm. so that in the end I'm, I'm a you know hopefully a better person for it yeah now i'm sure if you were speaking individually there are you know, there are different tools you'd use for different people in different situations. But as much as possible, if we're talking about generally, what are some tools that that people might want to 
kind of utilize. Yeah. Now that we're in this new space, it's an opportunity to try some new things. Or are there some, some things you might encourage people to try to develop some self-care routines? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think that routine, as much as you, you can uh, during this time, can be helpful, even if it's just a plan from which to deviate. Um, you know, I'm definitely a very adaptable person. I don't know, totally sidebar, but if anybody's taken the Strengths Finder assessment, I'm a huge fan. Um, and I'm, I'm one of those people where adaptability is one of the strengths, one of the 34 strengths, and um, it's my number two. So I kind of like change. And um, so sometimes for me, having a set schedule feels like more burdensome than, um, than helpful. But I think during this time uh, for me, it's been really helpful to have at least a little bit of a plan of here's what I'd like to get out of my day or here are my goals. I know um, in our family, every Sunday, actually, we've been sitting down and just setting uh, a family goal, uh, a career goal, and a personal goal, and then just sharing it with each other. Not, again, not to add more stress or to create, you know, uh, more of a challenge, but just to kind of have something to track for for the next week, because so many things seem uncertain, that that gives you one thing that you can kind of um, focus on. So that's something I would definitely um, recommend. But within that um, structure, some basic things that you can be thinking about during this time or any time really as far as self-care, you know, because um, this is a, a faith-based, uh, you know, discussion that we're having, I'll definitely mention first your relationship with God. You know, what is that going to look like during this time? Um, you know, hopefully, again, this is an opportunity to maybe revisit that relationship um, if it's something that, you know, usually maybe you don't make the time for as much. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I aim to have at least 10 minutes in prayer every day. Mm -hmm. um, do I fail? Absolutely. But, you know, that's yeah. at least I'm, I'm, uh, I've got the goal, right? Mm -hmm. um, same thing. So you're, you're spending time with God, spending time with yourself, which for some of us is easier than others. Mm -hmm. And not just, oh, I'm by myself watching Netflix, um, but time in meditation or out in nature, silent reflection to just really, um, you know, have time on your own to kind of process and check in with yourself about, you know, what do you need to best take care of yourself uh, when we're thinking about this idea of, of self-care. Um, another thing that could maybe be part of your prayer or it could take a different form would be demonstrating gratitude um, mm -hmm. is a great uh, yeah. way to take care of yourself. So, you know, expressing that gratitude um, to God or the universe or, you know, however you want to kind of conceptualize that. I like to do that through journaling, but again, that could be um, while you're out in nature or just kind of sitting quietly, but gratitude is a great way to both take care of yourself and also kind of recalibrate a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, of course, just the basics, how are you gonna nourish your body, um, move your body, get some exercise, uh, those kinds of things, of course, are important too. And gyms are closed, right? So that can be a little bit more challenging. Ah, yeah. um, so whether that looks like, you know, taking a walk around the block, or if you have uh, exercise equipment in your home, or just doing some yoga, you know, there are things that we can access that maybe are just out of our normal wheelhouse. So it could be a good time to pick up Tai Chi or yoga or walking if that's not something that you've accessed before. And you're typically, you know, on the rowing machine at the gym or something like that. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff there. And just so folks know, those who are watching, if you have any questions, now's a great time to start to kind of throw those up. I'll, I'll pull out my phone so I can kind of see what's coming up on our, uh, on our feed here, but as I do, um, so you threw out a lot of great ideas. Any suggestions for someone who might feel like, oh my goodness, all of those sound great, but I'm not, I'm like, where do I start? Um, what might you suggest as like a starting point for someone? Is that really subjective? Does it just depend? What might you say to that? Yeah, I think it's entirely subjective. And so the first step is giving yourself permission to, um, you know, to, to own that. The way I really kind of conceptualize self-care um, is about your progression, your own personal progression. And what I mean by progression is, you know, I consider myself 
a child of God, you know, God made me in his image. How would God want me to treat myself? Like that is self care. So it has nothing to do with buying an agenda book or an exercise program or making sure you're doing X number of hours a week. It's really more about being gentle with yourself, offering yourself forgiveness, but also recognizing those areas where maybe you can just step a little bit closer toward, um, you know, your best version of yourself. Hmm. Um, but that might look like one minute of closing your eyes and spending it in prayer or literally doing one stretch, you know, to just kind of open up a muscle that's feeling tight or give yourself a little shoulder massage or um, hand massage. You know, this isn't, that was the big thing that I needed to learn because when I, when I first, um, you know, heard this term self-care, I was in great physical shape. I was eating well. I was checking all of those boxes, but I was still super stressed out and super hard on myself. And so it really isn't about being this cookie cutter, kind of maybe like idealized version of yourself. It's, it's a very subjective, I think, personal and spiritual experience where you're digging deep and, and you're really reflecting on where am I going? Who am I? Um, and what's one micro movement that I can take in that direction. And that's between you and your creator. Like that has nothing to do with how many calories you burn. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so good. I mean, it sounds like part of what you're saying is the beginning of self care, you know, has to start with some sense of like honesty and vulnerability about kind of where you really are and what you really need. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I often joke too, that when I first started out on this journey, like I really conceptualized self-care as just giving myself a break at any point. And sometimes that took the, the shape of drinking too many glasses of wine or like venting gossipy, you know, about something or someone to a friend, but I was just so kind of spinning that that felt good in the moment. And in that moment, that was self-care for me. You know, it's not, it doesn't look the same now as it did five years ago um, or 10 years ago, but you, you need to just sort of identify, get quiet with yourself, identify what it is within reason, you know, relatively healthy that you, that you feel that you need that's going to help nudge you in the next direction. And then reassess. I mean, in a perfect world, right, it would be like this constant process of, um, reassessment and recalibration, you know, um, where am I now? Where am I going? Where am I now? Where am I going? Um, and that just takes, it takes time and it takes quiet. And I think that's, what's tough, um, in our culture. We're not necessarily, um, you know, in the Western world, really comfortable with that all of the time. Um, but again, I would say that's another one of the, um, potential blessings in this time we find ourselves in. For some of us, we have a little bit more time than we would have otherwise. Um, and for some of us not, so certainly not overlooking that, uh, just because that's been my experience in the last few weeks, you know, I know there's a lot of people who've had a lot of noise and disruption around them too, so. Um, yeah, absolutely. So man, there, there's so much there. And so again, I just wanna welcome folks who are watching in the, the few minutes we have left, if you wanna throw out a question in the comments, uh, please do, um, but I'm just going to keep throwing things out until we get some other questions. Um, so, so you said something about, um, you know, what self-care at one moment isn't maybe in another. Um, and, and I know sometimes for me, you know, something that feels good in the moment in retrospect, I'm like, well, was that really taking care of myself or was I just kind of uh, losing myself in binge watching episodes of 30 Rock or wh whatever, right? And so it, any hints about like, how can we tell when, um, when we've kind of crossed the line from self-care into just indulgence or some like, we're kind of losing ourselves or numbing mm -hmm. ourselves instead of caring for ourselves? Like, Yeah, it's a really delicate balance. And I think the main takeaway that I would want anyone listening, you know, to kind of glean from my experience would be just to continue to do that checking in, like, that's great that you're doing that. And you're like, hmm, now that I think about it, maybe that wasn't really like, maybe one episode was healthy and like I'm decompressing five in, that probably was a little, um, mm. you know, 
uh, wasn't serving me. Um, I'll, I'll share another. I feel like Netflix is the is the one that's most easily falls into that category. Um, yeah. At the beginning of the um, shelter in place, we started watching Ozark, which I was super into. And like for anybody out there who watches it, it yeah, it was really cool. It's about this family and they um, unsuspectingly are like in this drug cartel and they have they relocate. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed it. We were watching it right before bed and I realized it was like giving me this kind of dark, heavy feeling mm. that I was carrying with me through most of the night, you know, and I didn't want to admit it like this isn't serving me. Um, and then I finally was like, yeah, I don't think I should watch this anymore. Ultimately, we ended up finishing up to the episode you know, where we're current. Um, but I don't know if I'll pick it up again next time. And, and that's not to say that Ozark isn't going to be good for everyone, right? Like what, what is healthy for me right now may be very different from you. It's a very, in my um, experience, personal um, uh, situation. And like same, even with exercise, there was a time in my life where running a certain number of miles or, you know, eating a certain way, it was really healthy for me. And it gave me a way to, um, you know, to deal with stress and to cope, but that doesn't feel congruent now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really about just not necessarily getting so hooked on a way of being, and again, a pattern that, well, this is the way I've always done it. This is the way I've always um, had my nighttime routine. This is the show I've always watched. This is the exercise I've always done. Um, but taking a step back, just a few minutes, whether it's journaling, meditating, prayer, some way that you're gonna reflect on that and really get honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. And part of that getting honest too, I think is the goal setting experience. So like, where are you going? Like when you really start to reflect on that, um, you know, then, then that'll become a little bit more clear about what pieces you need to put in place um, to care for yourself to get there. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so you have recently, my guess is, uh, you know, your life has changed significantly over yeah. the past, not, not just with the pandemic, you know, all of our yeah. lives have changed with the pandemic, uh, but you have an eight month old. Um, yeah. And so how has that impacted the way you think about self-care? Because you mentioned earlier, even for folks, let's say folks who have kids, even if your life is slower, it's now slower with these little people around yeah. who, you know may, maybe don't experience that slowness with the same kind of gratitude that you do now now Ava's eight months so she you know uh, but what's that been like for you how, how has that how's being a mom it's been? so dichotomous yeah because in one sense it's like oh I, I never knew that that feeling of like well I I would do anything I would just not sleep for a week like I, I would not exercise I would not eat healthy if that if it because she needs something, right? So there's this one part of you, I think, at least in my experience as a parent, that's pulling you to completely throw your needs out the window. Um, that's not sustainable, of course. Um, and so I think the way for me that I've kind of um, conceptualized it for myself um, is that the way I'm treating myself now and modeling that for her is is just that it's modeling for her the way I want her to see herself. So, and, and similarly, the way I see her is the way I want to see myself. Hmm. Hmm. So just like she's a child of God and like, I just think she's this angelic creature that like, I don't, I can't believe I have in my life. That's the way God sees me, right? Hmm. Like hmm. stop treating yourself this way. Hmm. You're amazing. Hmm. So, um, you know, I think that how do I want her to behave when she's my age is the way I, I try to treat myself. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that more important than any, again, program or scripted anything that we could offer to children, a curriculum or a TV show or a book, they're watching everything we're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's how they're learning. And of course, if I could get into the nurture nature Yes, we all have different dispositions that kind of come with us genetically, but there's a lot that we pick up along the way from our caregivers and, and those adults that were around, you know, a lot. And so um, I think that this is perhaps revealing a lot too, as far as parenting, you know, where some of our weaknesses are, where we could 
brush up on some stuff like shoot when I was only seeing Johnny for 15 hours a week it was a lot easier to kind of say and do the right things but now when we're face to face better part of 24 hours a day this is a little more challenging um and so you know I guess the counselor side of me would say the only way you know through a relationship and to strengthen the relationship is that rupture and repair process and so it's not to say that there aren't those difficult sometimes courageous conversations that need to happen um but that's the way we grow stronger you know through connection and i think i don't think i'm unique in that uh this this experience this um you know shelter in place thing is providing us with an opportunity to really look um, at some of those relationships and appreciate them on a different level. Um, but also that, that, that comes with some inherent challenges. Um, and, and a really unique time to be able to possibly connect on a much deeper level with our littles at home than maybe we have in the past. So I would yeah. both challenge and encourage anybody listening to lean into that experience because I know it's not easy. Um, but I, I also believe wholeheartedly that it's very worthwhile if you do it. Hmm. That's really good. That's really good. Um, yeah. So we've got about five minutes left. Um, is there, if there was like one thing you could pass along one like little nugget that you're like, man, if I, I want to say anything. I want to make sure I say this. What mm. might that be? I mean, I guess I feel like a broken record, um, but don't be scared of yourself. You know, I think when we start to think about um, self care and our own brilliance and how those two things come together, it can, the easy option is to just grab onto the mundane and just keep going business as usual. Mm -hmm. um, allow this to be an opportunity to press pause, consider what it might look like to do things differently, even if you end up not choosing that. You know, at least honor yourself to take the time um, to make that consideration and to to imagine, you know, what what you might want to do um, differently um, to set some goals, even if it feels like they're impossible and you're never going to get there um, because you might be amazed um, what you can do when you commit to yourself um, and you say yes to yourself uh, yeah. through these self care practices. That's great. I and mean, one of the themes that I hear you talking about, it, it resurfaces again and again, and you haven't used this word necessarily, or maybe you have, but, the idea I keep thinking about is this idea of grace with yourself. Mm. Okay, like that, uh, you know, you mentioned again and again, that this isn't about, you know, that if you just form like kind of like a formula where if you just do A and B, then C will be the result and you'll be happy and healthy and everything will be wonderful. Um, but kind of just this process of learning to know yourself yeah. and care about yourself um, in a way that yeah. is as gracious to you as you would be with, you know, I, you know, I think about that you're, analogy of the newborn and how that shapes the way you think about how God sees you. And it, it's just remarkable to me that we have these little creatures who literally crap on us and we still, <laughs> right? like we still, um, yeah. and you know, I, I think that's a helpful analogy, both in terms of how we think about how God sees us and also in how we think about ourselves. Um, yeah. so that, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I don't think I had used the word grace, but I mean, that's, yeah perfectly fitting and i guess for anybody who's listening who you know isn't a parent or maybe that experience isn't as new as it is for me where it's so tangible um you know it's also similar to falling in love right just in general mm -hmm. like being in a romantic relationship that time where you just you can't help even though it's scary even though you're not sure how that person's going to receive it you can't help but just tell them how amazing you think that you just gush right like you just yeah. You can't help it. Fall in love with yourself. You know, the way that, that, that God loves you and God sees you fall, allow yourself to take that risk and to just start crack the door open on what if there were no limitations? What if there was nothing holding me back? Um, what would I want out of this life? Um, how would I want others to see me? How would I want to see myself and just start 
dreaming about that and fantasizing about that um, the way you would about a lover, you know, and, and it, it's amazing what you might uncover. And I love how you talked about it's not a plan. It's not A, B equals C. In fact, it most certainly or most probably is not C. You're probably going to end up somewhere totally different that you couldn't even have dreamed for yourself. But mm -hmm. what is certain is that it'll be um, God's plan for you, which I think is way better than what any of us could have dreamt of for ourselves anyway. I mean, if I can think back to the goals that I had when I first kind of started this process, it, it's not necessarily the life I'm living now, but I wouldn't trade the two for anything. This is way better. Um, I don't think you can go wrong, I guess, is the point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so good. That's great. Lauren, this has been wonderful. Uh, last question. We've got like one minute, maybe 30 seconds. Um, favorite quarantine pastime that you've discovered? What, what? Oh, my goodness. It started out as nature walks because we have these big fields behind our house, but then my dog started running off. So I haven't been on one of those for a while. Um, but uh, so now we put in a garden and that's been awesome. And that, that's new. That was just this weekend. So I can't quite claim it as a favorite quarantine pastime just yet. But I guess both of those together have just been spending more time outside and in nature. You know, that's something that's really like part of my soul and who I am. Um, and it's often the first thing to go when the schedule gets busy. Um, and certainly since having the baby and winter and all of that, I haven't spent much time outside. So it just feels really good to have a little burn going and, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, feel like I'm getting a lot of fresh air and getting my hands dirty. So it's been fun. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, Lauren, this has been wonderful. Uh, there's been a lot of great stuff tonight. I just, thanks again Thank for. You. Yeah, uh, for sure your generosity with your your gifts and yeah i hope this was a gift to those watching um i hope so too thank you so much for um indulging me in the conversation and letting me just kind of talk about something that um has been super helpful for me and that i'm just really passionate about so appreciate mm -hmm. you yeah awesome cool well now i'm going to awkwardly attempt to uh yeah. turn this facebook live off so uh, for the next few seconds, people can watch me do that. But, uh, but hey, again, thanks for, for being with us, Lauren. This is great. Have a great night. You're welcome. You too.